Welcome to episode 19. And if this is the first time that we meet, my name is Harvey Newman. I'm a professional animator and I like to share my passion for animation here in this channel with all of you. Today, we are gonna be talking about something a little bit more abstract than usual. We are gonna be talking about success. What is success to me? How do I define it? And what kind of steps can you take in order for you to be a successful animator. So let's get started with this episode 19. So what is success? Because it's very abstract and what is success to me is definitely not what is success to you. So when I used to look like this and I was 18, I used to actually think that success for me was all about being an artist, making it as an artist, being recognized by my peers and being recognized out there. Things have changed over the years because you start achieving certain things and you started becoming more confident and you're starting to pay attention to what really matters in life. So now I'm about to turn the wise age of 39 uh, in about a month's time. <laughs> and to me, success right now looks much more like this. I'm Jazzy. Jazzy. Two years old. Two years old. Can you say hello? Yeah. Like, uh, hello, I'm Jasmine. Can you say Sorry. Yeah, you have to point at me, Jazzy. Daddy. Jazzy, yeah. tickle this. Where? Where is Jazzy tickle this? Here. Here? <laughs> and here. <laughs> and on the neck. Right? And then legs, legs. Okay, you're gonna say bye-bye to the camera. Bye. Bye-bye to the camera. Bye-bye. See you in the next video. <laughs> As you grow older, obviously, you start realizing what is truly important in your life. And there's nothing more important than family. And all of your achievements and all of the things that you work on, they are nothing if you don't have someone that you love next to you, kind of a supporting you and giving you props for it. So that is success to me now. Having said that, because I have spent the last 29 years, 30 years trying to find a way to be successful, I picked up a lot of uh, tips and tricks on how to be successful in a way. Like, it's not that I set out to do those tips as in, this is a manual on how to be successful. It's just things that I have applied myself throughout my life that have been very useful to me in achieving certain things. So things that I applied when I created my hip hop blog, The Word Is Bond, which is now quite successful as an underground hip hop blog. Things that I've applied when I started pursuing my career in animation. Things that I've applied now to this YouTube channel. Things that independently of what you're doing or where you are in life will definitely help you to push you through either uh, artistic blocks, things that will help you to kind of just carry that momentum forward, which I think is really important when you're really trying to pursue something, when you're really trying to kind of uh, achieve something big, like being an animator, being an artist. And I do think that you need a set of rules that you kind of have to kind of uh, stay put with throughout the years in order to make it. So here's the few things that I reckon it will help you guys on the long run. So there's no formula to success, unfortunately. There's no way that you can actually just pick up someone and be like, do these things, and then you're gonna be successful. Each person is different, each path is different, and each goal is different. It depends on what you wanna do. If someone would ask me, Harvey, what is your formula for success, let's say, I would say, my formula for success would be something like success equals daily disciplines compounded over time. That will be my formula. Because here's the thing, if you don't keep up with your daily disciplines and you actually kind of have almost like a military regimen to the things that you do, you don't really have the sense that you're achieving things. You have to actually kind of do a little bit and then that little bit every day will compound to a lot on the long run. That's what I've seen throughout the years. I've never been in the military, but I do have to admit that I 
admire their sense of there's a unit, there's a team, and everyone has a little task, and these little tasks amount to a lot. Another formula that I would have would be this. Time spent times intensity of focus equals high quality of work. Because the more time you spend intensely focusing on what you're doing is going to eventually equal high quality in whatever you do. In other words, you have to focus constantly in what you're doing for a very long period of time in order to produce really amazing work. Keep those in mind. I have them in my notepad highlighted and I make sure that I take them with me at all times. So let's move on into a breakdown of some of the things that I do in order to keep these two formulas in check. Being a disciplined person helps you in the long run to kind of keep yourself on track. If you don't have within yourself this discipline to actually pursue your dream and if you don't keep your dream on top of your mind at all times as you follow through, eventually you run out of steam. So discipline is very important to kind of just keep you on track to make sure that it doesn't matter if it takes a week or it takes a year or it takes 10 years. If you have that discipline and you get into a routine, it means that you don't even think about it. And normally, to me at least, a discipline builds up after about three weeks of me constantly doing something. So I know that if I keep up with it for about three weeks, a month, then it's going to be in my routine and therefore I can actually just continue doing it almost in automatic mode. And then it becomes the opposite, almost like when you don't do it, it becomes weird. So yeah, discipline, routine, it's really important for you to keep on top of things. So as you start your journey as an animator, as an artist, anything that you actually decide to do, I'll suggest for you to do two things. First, do a journal that you can write down your thoughts, your ideas. Uh, and second, uh, perhaps have um, a notebook or an iPad or whatever you decide in order to put all your highlights from all the stuff that you read. If you haven't watched my video about the top books for animators, make sure to check it out. I also talk about uh, the tips to my younger self, which is always reading books. Um, and that's really important to me now more than ever. What I do when I'm reading a book, I actually have a, normally a highlighter and I just highlight anything that kind of just hits you in a way that is like, wow, this is really cool. So you just highlight it. But then what I do is like as a second pass, if something is really amazing, something that I never seen or I never heard or something that I finally understood, I normally make sure to write it down on a notebook that I kind of just have my ideas or things that I should not forget, things that I should definitely keep in mind. So then what I do is actually go to that book and then from time to time read it. I'm like, wow, cool, I forgot about this. I wrote this two years ago. That's true, I need to, I need to keep that in mind next time. Or like a quote to, to, to live in a better way, a quote to live more holistic or mindful note or something like that. You kind of just write it down and you'd be like, wow, this is, this is really cool. I haven't been doing this for a while now. I need to do it again. Now, journal. Don't take any of these things that I say that I'm actually doing this religiously every day because I'm not perfect. But yeah, a journal is really good for you to do it first thing in the day or last thing in the day. Like a way to put your thoughts into a page. Just random thoughts. You just like empty your brain from all the stuff that happened and then you go to sleep, wake up in the morning, you're fresh. If you do it in the morning, same thing. You can actually write things down like, um, what do I want to achieve today, specifically today? Uh, what am I thankful for? What lessons did I learn from yesterday? I actually use a digital uh, notebook. It's called Day One, I believe. And uh, it's really cool because it syncs to the cloud. You never lose anything. You can put pictures on it. And uh, it's really nice for you to go back and just see where you were mentally. Let's say that you've been trying to chase your dream as an animator for a year or two and nothing is really happening. Then definitely have a journal. Just write it down because guaranteed when you look back at those notes, you're gonna find a pattern that you keep repeating. And in order for you to break out from that pattern, you only can do it if you can actually kind of see yourself from an outside perspective. And that's what a journal kind of gives you. Like, wow, I was really dark at that point. It's really nice for you to capture a snapshot of your mental status on a page 
and then go back and keep things fresh at all times. So willpower is yet another piece of this puzzle that it's not the same for everybody. Different people have different willpower. Some people actually have the willpower to take on the world and do everything possible. And that's nice. Some people don't really have a strong willpower to do very many things. And that's okay too. There's no right or wrong here. What I'm saying is this. If you actually want to achieve something big and it's gonna take a lot of hard work like animation, you will have to develop, if you don't have it yet, a strong willpower to continue and pursue your dream because you're gonna get a lot of blocks on your way up and a lot of people will try to actually kind of stop you from carry on because they will ask you questions like uh, do you really think you can make it as an animator do you really think you can work for Disney do you really think you're gonna work for that huge company at Blizzard or a naughty dog because perhaps you're in your bedroom in like a small town somewhere that no one knows you it really feels like a reality that it's impossible to achieve but as long as you have a strong willpower nothing really can stop you no matter what anyone tells you positive or negative you are the person that knows yourself the most and you are the person that truly knows that you have inside what it takes to get to the level that you want to be so work on that willpower and be positive and just keep on going, because uh, a strong willpower will actually break through anything. So drifting, this is something that a lot of people do, and I think they do it unconsciously, they don't really realize that they're doing it, but they kind of just drift through life without really having a name or goal. Even though in their minds they think they're going somewhere, but what they're saying or thinking is very different from what they are doing. So they just drift and they just hope to get to somewhere that they want to be. It's impossible for you to achieve what you want to achieve without you taking steps in order to achieve it. I think it makes sense, right? I mean, you have to work hard and you have to take certain decisions in order to go to where you want to go. You keeping this drifting mentality or drifting uh, mindset at bay is the best thing you can do because we as humans we are lazy and it's normal and it's built within us and I know it very well <laughs> if you find or you don't have the willpower to actually kind of uh, do the steps necessary to actually go to where you want to be then you just drift into something that you probably won't like you just end up in a job and that job will give you a promotion but that's not really what you want to do but eh, it's okay and then you start drifting that way and it's fine until it's not because it's too late so make sure that you don't drift so what is vision? Vision is almost the opposite of drifting. You have the vision to map out exactly how you're going to achieve your dreams. The steps that you're gonna take in order to actually get to the point that you wanna be. Think long game and think about what do you have to do in the immediate future in order to achieve your dream, but also what kind of steps do you have to take on the long run. That vision to actually kind of be like, Ultimately, I want to be making games. I want to be a games director. I want to own my games company. I want to be the CEO of Sony. Whatever you decide to be, just make sure that you have vision to achieve your goals on the long run. So think short term and long term at the same time. Once again, if you write it down, read a lot of books, animation or otherwise, you'll find out there's a lot of people, a lot of successful people that have taken similar steps to get to where they are. And once they get there, they normally have stories on where they want to be or how they achieved even more than they actually thought they could. So make sure you keep your vision clear by doing these steps and thinking long game. So goals are important and are going to be the thing that is going to get you to that vision, to that thing that you actually want to be. Instead of keeping your goals in your mind all the time, you need to actually constantly do a brain dump of goals into somewhere that you can visually see. Because 
To me, at least, I feel like goals is something that needs to be a visual thing. You need to actually put it, let's say, in a board right above where you work. Make sure that you can see them, because if they're in your mind, it means that they're occupying space that they shouldn't really, because you need to use your mind for other things. But make sure that you do define your goals, you define them early, and your goals will change, and you'll have new goals. The beauty of it is, the previous goals have informed you in how your goals have changed. So it's gonna feel better and better. It's almost like you're kind of chaining up goals. You have, I have this goal and I have this goal. I've achieved three out of five, therefore I'm gonna go over here. Now I have these other goals. And then you do those and then you see where it goes. But you have to map them out in order to actually achieve something of substance in a way. We talked about all these things that you can do and plan and write up to this point. We are just planning. Now it's time to execute. So all of these things that you wrote down, no matter how much time you spend thinking about, okay, so I work this way, therefore I'm gonna have like a diary here on my phone and I'm gonna have this paper. No matter how much you think about it, if you just put it on a piece of paper and you do nothing, it becomes nothing. So you have to execute on those things. That's the most difficult part, and this is why people drift. This is the bit that requires the most effort, especially if it's an execution that is gonna take years in the making, like a career in animation. You have to actually kind of uh, keep on executing and make sure that you see execution almost like going to the gym. I'm pretty sure all of you can relate. Going to the gym is difficult in the beginning. It's a sure, you don't wanna do it, it's horrible, you sweat, after about three weeks to a month, then your body starts to feel good. And you're like, man, this is actually good. I like it. And then it almost becomes addictive because you just want to do it all the time. So that's what you need to do with this execution of all your planning. You kind of do your lists. You organize everything as best as you can. You dump all the information off your brain. You put it somewhere organized that you can see. And then you execute and you do that often. And once you do that often, you realize that you're gonna feel great. We are wired to be productive. We are also wired to be lazy. But if you lean on the productive more than you lean on the lazy, eventually you're gonna be addicted to being productive all the time. And when your productivity is organized in this way, I found that I can do so much more than I ever thought I could, and I can do it at a much higher level than I thought I could. So this is why execution is so important and why you should do it all the time. This is the one step that I think people fail the most. That's the only thing that is separating the people that are successful from the people that are not. Execution. Okay, so that's a wrap for episode 19. I hope you guys liked it. I read many books about being productive, organized. It's something that I always felt that I was really bad at. I was always being very clumsy. From my young age, I always wanted to organize myself because I always felt that if I did, I could be more productive. And there's only so many hours in a day for you to be productive. So I do find that doing these things does help you to do more with your day. You still need to sleep, you still need to take care of your family, you still need to actually go out with friends. Where do you fit all this? That's when these steps come through for you to organize yourself. So I hope it helps you. The one book that I would recommend you, and I'll leave a link down below, is this book called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. He explains all these steps very, very well. Um, I got them from different sources, but he kind of put them all in one book and explains them in a very nice way, very easy to read. So you guys should definitely go and get it if you wanna know more about this stuff. That's all I had. I hope you have a great, great, great week ahead. And until next week, stay well, stay safe. Peace.